the Cannizzaro reaction, named after its discoverer Stanislaw Cannizzaro, is a chemical reaction which involves the base induced disproportionation of two molecules of a non enolizable aldehyde to give a primary alcohol and a carboxylic acid. The aldehyde having no alpha hydrogen gives this reaction. The reaction involves a nucleophilic acyl substitution on an aldehyde with a leaving group concurrently attacking another aldehyde in the second step. First, hydroxide attacks a carbonyl. The resulting tetrahedral intermediate then collapses, reforming the carbonyl and transferring hydride to attack another carbonyl. In the final step of the reaction, the acid and alkoxide ions formed exchange a proton. In the presence of a very high concentration of base, the aldehyde first forms a doubly charged anion from which a hydride ion is transferred to the second molecule of aldehyde to form carboxylate and alkoxide ions. Subsequently, the alkoxide ion acquires a proton from the solvent. So for the demonstration, I took 20 ml of benzaldehyde, 15 gram of sodium hydroxide, 100 ml of diethyl ether and 42 ml of 9 molar hydrochloric acid which will be used later for the workup but as you can see my benzaldehyde is yellow colored and inside the bottle some white crystals of benzoic acid have been formed so to purify my benzaldehyde i transferred 20 ml benzaldehyde into a separatory funnel to it i added 30 ml of saturated sodium bicarbonate solution then it was shaken gently and cap was removed but not much pressure was formed. So I again capped the funnel and shook it as best as I could. But on separation, the benzaldehyde layer was very cloudy. So I added some sodium chloride into the mixture. The funnel was capped, shaked and vented. Pressure was building up, which indicates benzoic acid in benzaldehyde is still reacting with some sodium bicarbonate and breathing carbon dioxide gas. After no more pressure was formed, the layers were allowed to separate and this time the lower layer was the aqueous layer because on adding salt, density of water increases. The aqueous layer was drained off and discarded. Then the benzaldehyde was collected in a graduated test tube and it was seen that around 1.5 ml of benzaldehyde was lost in the washing step. So now we are starting with 18.5 ml of benzaldehyde. Now I took 15 gram of NaOH and added 15 ml distilled water to it and stirred it with a glass rod and it was kept aside. Then I took a 250 ml flat bottom flask and added 18.5 ml benzaldehyde in it. To the benzaldehyde I added my prepared sodium hydroxide solution. I also washed my test tube with it and transferred it in the flask. Immediately some white solid was formed. I stoppered the flask and shook it to mix everything. On mixing the color changed to orange and the flask warmed up as the reaction is exothermic. It was shaken for several minutes and kept overnight. The next day the solid has turned pink. I opened the flask and smelled it. It still had the smell of benzaldehyde. So to complete the reaction, I kept the flask on a hot water bath for around 30 to 40 minutes. When the flask cooled, I again opened it and smelled it. Now the smell of benzaldehyde was not observable and a pleasant smell of benzyl alcohol or benzyl alcohol was observed. So I added distilled water to dissolve the solid in small proportions, just enough to dissolve. The chunks were not dissolving so I again kept it on a hot water bath to dissolve. So that even if some benzaldehyde is left, it would react. I then added enough water to dissolve the solid sodium benzoate and added a magnetic bead and stirred with my DIY magnetic stirrer to dissolve all the solid. After some time, solution cleared up. So I took out the bead with a magnet and poured the solution into a separatory funnel. Since benzyl alcohol is slightly soluble in water, it has to be extracted five times with 20 ml diethyl ether. For time's sake, I am showing only first extraction. 
I pour 20 ml of diethyl ether in the separatory funnel, capped sheet and vented several times and the layers were allowed to separate. The lower aqueous layer was drained. Then the upper ethereal layer was drained into a flask. Then the aqueous layer was again poured back into the separatory funnel for further extraction. After all the extraction, the ethereal layer was dried with anhydrous sodium sulfate. So I added a fair amount of sodium sulfate, capped and swirled the flask and let it rest for some time. After some time, ether cleared up. So I transferred everything into a beaker. As I had only 100 ml round bottom flask with ground glass joint, I had to use this flask only for distillation. So uh, after I transferred all the sodium sulfate into the beaker, I carefully decanted off the ether into the same round bottom flask. Now I placed the flask in a water bath and placed a boiling chip into it. Then I placed a still head with a mercury thermometer and arrange the apparatus for simple distillation. Ice cold water was circulated in the condenser and the water bath was heated. The receiving flask was cooled in an ice bath and the ether was collected. When no more ether was collected and boiling stopped, water bath was removed. The still head was insulated with aluminium foil. The receiver was changed and the flask was heated with spirit lamp. The flask was also wrapped up with aluminium foil. Benzyl alcohol boils at 205 degrees Celsius. So initially some distillate that came around 100 degrees C was discarded as it may be some water that would have remained. The distillate that came between 200 to 210 degrees Celsius was collected when a very little liquid remained in the flask nothing came over so i stopped heating 6.1 gram of benzyl alcohol was obtained which corresponds to a percentage yield of 61 percent now to the aqueous layer that contains sodium benzoate i added 42 ml of 9 molar concentrated hydrochloric acid with stirring the dissolved ether bubbled out as the solution heated due to the neutralization reaction. After adding all the HCl, I had stirred it and checked its pH, which showed highly acidic. The solution was hot, so it was cooled first and then the precipitate of benzoic acid was filtered off using vacuum filtration by my DIY Buchner funnel and vacuum pump. Then the precipitate was transferred in a beaker and it was recrystallized from distilled water. Benzoic acid is soluble in hot water, so I kept on adding water in small proportions to the boiling solution until everything dissolved and then let it cool at room temperature. As the solution cooled, benzoic acid crystallizes out. The crystals were filtered off using vacuum filtration and dried in a desiccator. The yield came to be 9 gram that corresponds to a percentage yield of 79%. Theoretically, benzyl alcohol and benzoic acid should have been formed in equimolar amounts, but yield of benzyl alcohol is significantly lower than benzoic acid as it has to go through solvent extraction and distillation, whereas benzoic acid is just precipitated from the aqueous layer and undergoes recrystallization. So, some benzyl alcohol would have been lost in the extraction process and some in distillation. Thanks for watching. If you have any suggestions, please write down in the comment section and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. If you like my work, you can support me financially through Patreon and PayPal. Links are given in description.